We've heard of personas, but what in the world is an anti-persona? For starters, it's not quite the same as a persona. Where personas are used to build empathy with target users, anti-personas are meant to give product design teams and businesses awareness of major risks that they should strive to mitigate and potential clues about how to mitigate them. An anti-persona is defined as a schematic representation of a user group that could misuse a product in ways that negatively impact target users and the business. Think about if we were designing a days of the week pillbox. We'd wanna make it easy for users of all ages to distinguish the days of the week and open and close the pill compartments. But think about if a child came across this pillbox and found it appealing and easy to open. The consequences of a child opening that pillbox and ingesting the contents could be fatal to the child and detrimental to the business as well. We create antipersonas to anticipate risks like this. An antipersona is comprised of eight elements. Most of these elements tie back to the risk. The first element is name and face, which serve the purpose of humanizing the threat and increasing memorability. The next thing you'll want to include is the anti-persona's goal. This should describe the threat. For example, is someone trying to steal information from your application? Are they trying to spread fake information? Or perhaps they're trying to spread illegal content. The third element is the anti-persona's motivations. Think about why the anti-persona cares about achieving their goal. For example, if someone wants to steal jewelry from a store, do they want to steal it so that they can resell it? Or simply because they want the precious stones? If their motivation is to resell the jewelry, the jewelry will need to remain intact and they might be more careful about how they steal it. Which brings us to our next element, actions. Actions should explicitly detail the steps an anti-persona takes to achieve their goals. Understanding the step-by-step -step actions can help us mitigate at every step. But what are they using to achieve their goals? This brings us to tools. Tools in your anti-persona should capture technologies, tools or capabilities the anti-persona uses to accomplish their goal. For example, what tool might they use to break into a glass jewelry showcase? It's probably not a hammer if they want the jewelry to be in good condition. Perhaps it's something that allows them to carefully but quickly pry open the glass. After you've thought about goals, motivations, actions, tools, you'll have a pretty good picture of the context in which the person is operating. With this context, the next thing you'll want to do is ask yourself, what does the anti-persona need to be in place to achieve their goals? In other words, what protections are not in place that might enable the anti-persona? This will be contextual, which is why it's helpful to think about this after the other elements. And last, you need to consider the consequences of the anti-persona achieving their goal. For example, if the child gets into the pillbox and consumes the contents, the consequences would be fatal. And this could be fairly likely, even in situations where achieving the goal is less likely, but the consequences are high, it is wise to create the anti-persona. Once you've come up with all eight elements of your anti-persona, your product design team can refer to it throughout the user-centered design process. It will help ensure that they're always aware of detrimental risks and will increase the likelihood that they make design decisions that mitigate these risks.